Hey guys, Sean here and welcome to the F1 Word. So last week it was announced that Sebastian Vettel will be leaving Ferrari at the end of this year, with Carlos Sainz taking his seat at the Scuderia alongside Charles Leclerc and Daniel Ricciardo heading off to fill that empty seat at McLaren. But what does this mean for Sebastian Vettel's future? Will he stay in F1 with another team, perhaps take a sabbatical, or will he retire altogether? Well, let's start by having a look at the teams who have got seats available for 2021. Mercedes have two seats open as both Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas are out of contract at the end of the year, although it is widely expected, certainly if you listen to Lewis's comments about wanting to stay where he is, that the six-time world champion will be staying put for another year. When it comes to Bottas's future though, there are certainly no guarantees. Max Verstappen is tied to Red Bull for the next few years and teammate Alexander Albon is in that second seat for now, but nobody really knows if he will be there beyond the end of this year, so there could be a seat available there too. Renault have Esteban Ocon signed up for next season, but with Daniel Ricciardo making that switch to McLaren, there is a seat going spare with the French manufacturer. There are two seats available at Alpha Tauri, with Daniel Kvyat and Pierre Gasly both yet to be signed up. Neither Kimi Raikkonen nor Antonio Giovinazzi have contracts for 2021, and that's also the case for Kevin Magnussen and Roman Grosjean, so that's two seats vacant at both Alfa Romeo and Haas. Depending on who you listen to, Williams either have one seat open or two. Some reports claim that George Russell has a contract for next year, others say that he doesn't. But let's assume for a second that he doesn't have a contract. If Toto Wolff were to choose not to promote Russell, the Brit will more than likely have first refusal on one of those seats at Williams. And then we've got Racing Point or Aston Martin from next season, of course. Their situation depends very much on what you read into what Mar Safanauer's recent comments about getting the best out of the drivers they have. We already knew that Sergio Perez is tied down for the next few seasons, but there have been some reports over the weekend claiming that Lance Stroll had been told that his place in the team wasn't a given and that if he wanted to keep his seat, he would have to prove himself this year. However, those comments from Safanauer all but confirm that they are likely to stick for 2021. And F1 journalist Philip Horton has pointed out that Stroll signed for Racing Point on a long-term deal back in 2019. And so, as such, the situation hasn't changed and so he's going to stay, not to mention the fact that his dad owns a team. There you go then, those are the options open to Vettel if he wants to stay in F1 beyond the end of 2020, but the idea of the German moving to some of those teams is highly unlikely. Even if, for whatever reason, he wanted to race for Williams or Haas, neither team would realistically be able to afford to pay his wages and so that all but rules them out. Aston Martin, as just mentioned, looks set to stick with their lineup, and although Franz Tost has said a lot of nice things about Seb over the last few days, it's very unlikely we'll see him in an Alpha Tauri anytime soon. There may not be many or any Red Bull juniors ready to make the leap up to F1 just yet, but that team is still very much Red Bull's junior team, and so I wouldn't expect to see Vettel returning to them. On top of that junior team status, you could possibly argue that they would fall within the same bracket as Williams and Haas when it comes to being unable to afford his salary. The main Red Bull team don't appear to be an option. For one, they are building that team around Max Verstappen. It's unlikely that Seb is going to want to play second fiddle. And Helmut Marko has actually already poured hot water over that possibility by admitting they couldn't afford to pay the wages of both Verstappen and Vettel. And Christian Horner described the prospect of Vettel returning as enormously unlikely. So that leaves Mercedes, Renault and Alfa Romeo then. Now the idea of Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel as teammates at Mercedes is a mouth-watering prospect. They are two of the best drivers on the grid. They've got 137 wins between them and a collective total of 10 world titles. Personally, I would love to see that. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of F1 fans who would love to see it happen too. And Toto Wolff hasn't totally ruled out the possibility. He's spoken of the great marketing opportunity it would be to have a German driver in a German car and that he can't ignore the fact that Vettel has become available. But as great as this would be, it's not something that I'm expecting to see. It is interesting, absolutely, that Toto hasn't come out and just said no, but he also hasn't really said yes either. The truth is, you can't ignore the fact that Seb is available for 2021 because the news has been everywhere. I just think that was a cleverly worded statement, to be honest. You know, it perhaps gives Mercedes a better hand when it comes to negotiating with Lewis Hamilton about his future. But he has also said that the team's 2021 lineup will be influenced by what he called a long term strategy. And let's be honest, Vettel isn't going to be that long term, really. He is only 32, 33 at the end of this year, but if Toto's looking at five, six, seven years down the line, he's not going to be looking at Sebastian Vettel. Then again, Vettel is younger than Hamilton, so it depends which way you look at that. I think that's more aimed at trying to get George Russell in that car or looking at what to do with George Russell. It is also possible that he's keeping tabs on the situation as he waits to see what Hamilton does. He will probably extend his deal with Mercedes, but if he doesn't, 
I do think there's a good chance we'll see Vettel filling the British seat, perhaps with George Russell alongside him. We'll see. And in fairness to Bottas, I've got to say this, he works very well with Hamilton and does all he needs to do to help the team to win titles. He's doing a good job there. And I can't imagine they would drop him to bring in Seb for what could be a very explosive driver lineup. And yeah, a lineup that will be very tough to manage. Neither Hamilton nor Vettel are going to want to play number two. So long story short, I'd love it to happen, but I don't think it's going to. We can dream though. I do think Alfa Romeo are well worth a mention. Kimi Raikkonen will retire at some point, and it could well be this year. Then again, we've said that for the last two or three seasons now, so who knows with Kimi. And if the team are looking for an experienced driver to partner whichever young hotshot Ferrari decides to put in that second seat, Seb would be a very, very good option. As is the case with many teams, certainly right now though, money might be an issue and they may struggle to afford to pay Vettel's salary. At the end of the day, I said this a few weeks ago, yes, they've got this backing from Alfa Romeo, but they are still fundamentally the Sauber team with a fancy name. But I really don't think that would be a bad place for Vettel to go should he want to keep racing in F1. There is a big reason why I'm not convinced on this one though, but more on that shortly. Renault could well be his best bet then. They are a team with some very good backing. It's a manufacturer seat and they are desperate to make their way to the very front of the grid again. And if they are looking for an experienced driver to help with that, then Sebastian Vettel could be the perfect choice. However, it appears as though they are flirting with the idea of bringing back Fernando Alonso, and some reports even go as far as to claim that he signed a pre-agreement with the French manufacturer. I'm not convinced by that one, as I said on Sunday, of course, and it is a topic I will probably revisit in a future video, but we'll see. You never know with Fernando. Back to Vettel, though. Renault are probably his best option if we're talking about the prospect of eventually winning races, whenever that may be. My point is, of all the teams with available seats, Renault are probably best placed to make the move up the grid. But can the likes of Vettel and indeed Alonso really ignore the backwards step Renault took last season? And what about all this continuing speculation about the team's long-term future in the sport? If either driver is going to move to that team, Renault are going to need to show a lot of commitment to their F1 project and some real progress as well, or signs of real progress. Here's the thing though, and this is what I wanted to add to my little bit on Alfa Romeo. It has often been said that Sebastian Vettel is not the kind of driver who will move to a team just because there is a seat available. He wants to be somewhere where he can challenge, not just drive around in the midfield. And that's something that has been reiterated by Franz Tost in the last few days. He said that Seb is not a driver who just wants to be on the starting grid. Essentially, although he will still want to race on, I'm absolutely sure of that, he doesn't want to join a team just for the sake of racing in F1. He wants to be competitive. Nothing against either of them, but Raikkonen and Alonso, for example, were happy to take that step back into the midfield just to stay in F1. I'm not convinced Seb will. Of course, if a team like Renault, for example, can show him enough in terms of ambition and indeed how things could be shaping up for 2022, basically, if they can give him the assurances he needs that the team will be able to challenge when the regulations change, he may well accept a season fighting for the best of the rest if he knows better things are on the horizon. But to go from Ferrari to Renault, can we see Seb doing that, really? No disrespect to what they're doing at Enstone, but right now that is quite a step down. They are the facts then and my view on each of his possible options, but where do I think Seb will be in 2021? Honestly, I keep going back to that quote from him last week. His line about how what has been happening recently has led him to reflect on what his priorities are and that he wants time to reflect on what really matters before making any decision about his future. Now that is absolutely open to individual interpretation, but I read that as a guy who, number one, doesn't yet know what he wants to do, and two, a driver who is, at the very least, contemplating some time away from the sport. I'm not convinced he wants to retire totally, and actually a sabbatical might not be a bad idea. It gives him that time to reflect that he wants, and he can also look at where everyone lands ahead of the big regulation change in 2022, and how teams are shaping up as well, who looks to be stealing a march on those around them. Is there a team in that midfield that looked like they might be about to do a Mercedes in 2014, as an example? And I think right now, based on the available options, what he said and what those who know him best are saying in the press, I believe he will be heading for a sabbatical at the end of 2020. Now, of course, it is only May and we haven't even seen a car on track in anger yet, so a lot could change between now and the end of this year. Hamilton could retire, giving Seb a shot at the top seat at Mercedes. Renault might surprise a few and become a more tantalising prospect than they are right now and we could still see some surprise moves in the driver market. Then again, if he is absolutely desperate to race and that fire is still burning, he might just take any seat that he can get his hands on. But again, Seb doesn't strike me as that kind of driver, and as of right now, I don't think Vettel will be on the grid next year. I'll be disappointed not to see him, but of course it could just be a sabbatical, so even if he's not on the grid next year, that doesn't necessarily mean that we'll have seen the last of him racing in Formula 1. 
that is it for this video then. But what do you guys think Sebastian Vettel will decide to do for 2021? You can, of course, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. I'll be back later this week, but in the meantime, you can follow me over on social media and you can find all of the links you need for that in the description down below. But as ever, thank you for watching and I'll hopefully catch you again in the next one. Bye-bye.